Call the meeting to order. I'll rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Is there a motion to approve the agenda? Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. He's not muted, is he? I don't think he should be. Okay. Can you hear us, Tom? Yes. Oh. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Agenda is approved. Review of the minutes from the October 10th, 2022 meeting. Is there a motion to approve those minutes? Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Minutes are approved. Any open public comment? No one's on, are they? Mm-hmm. Our ratings are falling. <laughs> All right. Guests, we have Lyle. From Cedar, and I can't remember you. Olivia, Olivia that's Olivia. That's right. No, you're from a different, a different <laughs> concept. That's what it's like. <laughs> Throws me all off. Okay, um, so basically coming to speak about the success of Cedar, its regional marketing campaign, and um, currently allocating a dollar per resident, which comes to about seventeen hundred for the town of Proctor. Yeah, probably. So Just because the mic. Tom can see too. Well, we very much appreciate the fact that you don't run away screaming each year that we come because you know why we're coming, and it's <laughs> to ask for money. Um, but we also are going to ask you if you would please join us, and I'm going to give you the uh, copy of these folders, but we hope that you will please join us for the opening of the Hub Co-Works in downtown Rutland. It's on Merchants Row. It's, we're going to have our grand opening on the 14th of November, and we'll have our annual meeting, which will be brief. We'll be giving away some awards. But the Hub Co-Works is a co-working facility and a business incubator, and we've been working with the Center on Rural Innovation to write a grant, and we are hoping that what you will see in the future are small businesses springing from this location uh, with support from a program that we'll put in place uh, in the Hub. Um, we recently received from uh, the EDA a, almost a $750,000 grant to help fund this, and we received matching money from the city of Rutland and from other places in the equal amount. So we have money for the next three years to operate this facility, and we hope that it's going to spring small businesses. We hope that it will be people that want to work at the Hub Co-Works, which is a co-working facility, and that um, they may be buying homes in communities like yours. So I'm going to pass this folder around. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, it's not as bad as during the benediction. Tom, yeah. I'm going to leave one with uh, Mike for you. And so we have come to you, and you have been a supporter from the beginning when it came to regional marketing. And so we wanted to just briefly talk to you about the success of the program, the fact that it is working, and the fact that we want and need continued support. We'll talk a little bit about the budget because we want to be completely transparent. But what people sometimes ask us is, what, what's going on with this regional marketing thing? And so you see a picture there of Franklin's. And in the recent past, we did a campaign about my story is in. And we went to every, all 27 towns in the county and Rutland City, and we found a person or pe people that are notable in the community and made sure we took their pictures, and then we put them out on our website. So what's happening with regional marketing? Um, Olivia is going to tell you a little bit about a campaign that we just did and why campaigns work. So I'm going to just turn it over to her, and she's going to walk you through the right-hand side of that brochure yes. so underneath the photo of your neighbors is an article that we wrote recapping the real Rutland weekend getaway 
So our most recent campaign was the Real Rutland Weekend Getaway, where we put out on social media ads that reached <coughs> over 400,000 people nationwide about a weekend that we were giving away, pretty much all-inclusive, here in Rutland County for people who are serious about relocating here. So we had about 450 people apply, and then I interviewed about 30 people who were of the more serious subset, and then from there, we invited four of the families to come. They were from Austin, Texas, just outside of LA, California, Manhattan, New York, and Raleigh, North Carolina. They stayed up in Killington. They came down into this Rutland city. They did an entire Rutland County wide scavenger hunt that took them to every single town within the county. Some of them went to the Marble Museum over here. And then um, they got to do other things like kayaking on the reservoir, rock climbing inside. One of the families actually ended up putting an offer on a house in Pittsburgh. And we've been staying in contact with these families who are interested in coming here. And for those who didn't get selected for the weekend getaway, we've also been talking to them and keeping in touch to see how we can help them if they do decide to relocate here. So. Underneath that is the Real Rutland and Concierge Program at a glance. So since we began this almost seven years ago, we've had over 200 people move here to over 10 towns throughout the county. And at this time, we have over 30 people who are active concierge volunteers, which they're basically the families, the people who move here, their first friend when they come here, someone to welcome them to the community and kind of tell them what Rutland County is really about. So underneath that is the weekend getaway advertisement target targets. Those are the areas that we see a lot of people moving here from. Many of them are climate chasers. They're coming to where it's cooler here, where we don't have wildfires and they feel safer starting a family. And then underneath that is a potentially confusing bar graph, but the blue bars are when we're not running a campaign, and then the green bars are when we are running a campaign for June of 2022, which shows you that when we do have a campaign running with money from towns, that it really works. We get a lot of people on our website seeing where we are and learning about us. So circling back to why are we doing this, because our employers need employees. And if you look at that picture of the people who came to visit as part of the weekend getaway, there were eight adults. Four of them could work remotely from where they currently work around the United States. The other four have skills that we could find them jobs immediately. And our employers continue to say we don't have a deep enough pool of skilled labor to draw upon and so that's why we're doing this. And it also will put more students in our schools. It will allow us to spread out the tax base so that we can afford the uh, infrastructure that we want in our towns and communities. We continue to be an aging county. Uh, we continue to not have a high enough population to support everything we want to do. You're helping with that with your donation. And the very last page of that, because we want to be very transparent, is the budget. And you'll see that we have a budget of about $134,000. Part of that comes from the towns. Rutland City recently uh, donated 16,000, which is one person per um, person in the city. And we are going to several other towns, including yours, asking for the same. You've been there from the very beginning, and I very much appreciate that. <clears throat> and this is, we consider a 10-year plan. We're now going into year seven. And we continue to look back and see how are we doing. When we get to 10, year 10, my bet is we're gonna come back for year 11. Because when you market, you just keep going. You can't stop marketing. And even during the pandemic, Ford kept marketing their trucks. They couldn't make them because they didn't have computer chips. But they kept marketing their trucks because they knew eventually they, were, they needed to continue to be out there because they would be getting their trucks out there. And now you see them selling trucks again. How we're spending the money, you'll see that at the bottom there. Primarily staff and marketing. And the marketing is in large part outbound. 
Yet during the winter season, we do marketing up at Killington because there are thousands of people that come and we want them to see the Killington TV ads. We want them to see ads in the Mountain Times. Um, and so we do some in, internal marketing as well. So this is probably the same thing that we said last year and the year before and the year before, but it's working and people are getting their eyes on Rutland County and they're, they are visiting and they are coming here. And you might say, only 200 people moved here? Well, in Killington, 750 people moved to Killington during the pandemic. They doubled their population. But they were folks that didn't come through our program. They were folks that had second homes and they came up to live in their second homes primarily. But we know the 200 people that are on our list came through the program because we have a concierge volunteer who, a coordinator, that talks to them and then connects them with other volunteers to answer their questions. So we are respectfully asking that if you wouldn't mind, I like the $1,700 figure. I was gonna come and ask for 1640, but 1700 <laughs> is even better. Yeah. Um, so if you would put your, that money in your budget again, we would love it. And we'll continue to do the work that we're doing with your support. Anybody have any questions, comments? <laughs> I, you know, it seems to be seems to be helping, and if we don't do this continual advertising and the programs that you're doing, you know, <clears throat> it's a it's really a small <clears throat> amount to, to put into the pot. Lisa. Um, am I, did I hear you correctly that you said that when they came to Proctor for the scavenger hunt, they went and directed them to the Marble Museum? Yes. So they needed to come and they needed to take a picture someplace mm -hmm. in each town. Mm -hmm. And so they were asked to come and take, because it's just a prominent location mm -hmm. to take a picture. Mm -hmm. So they were outside. I'm a little disappointed that you think that is the marketing of the town of Proctor. I think that if you um, watched our select board meetings or listened to people in town that recreation is really a huge part of what we've done with beaver pond with the heritage trail with the link and so it seems odd to me that as people that are in marketing that you wouldn't be more in touch with who we are in proctor and that you would send them to what i would consider to be a stagnant um business uh, for the past three years, rather than you could have sent them here to the town office. You could have sent them to Beaver Pond. There was a sign there. You could have sent them to the ring, to the carriage trail, to the library, to the falls, where there's a historic sign where we have the largest falls in the state. So that makes me, I, I, I have questioned you every time you've come. And um, to me, this is another um, check against that as marketing people, you would send people to our community to a dead establishment. And you have a lot of places, that many of which you've just listed. That I that sent you a paragraph about so that our um, town was updated and current on the website because it was so stagnant for so long and not current with what was going on in the town. And so I might push back just a little and say that the, me the event that I went to two Saturdays ago at the Marble Museum had a couple hundred people there. That's one event in three yeah. years. And, th and that was a, an opening, and I think an exciting moment for your community as Zion Growers is beginning to support the things that are going on here. So I hope that that grows over there. I hope that our involvement would be helping to bring in some businesses to that because it's not full. There's a lot of space in there and they're looking uh, right now for folks to, to join them. So I hope that that happens. And um, I do remember you've sent us stuff. Thank you for that. But, but, you, but you went to one event in, in an institution that's been closed for three years. We have the Marble Bridge, we have the Falls, and you still, you send people from out of town to a place that's not even open, where people aren't even 
there on the weekends. I just, I don't understand that. There are people at Beaver Pond. I mean, if you wanted people to have an experience and see what was happening in our town, there were people there every weekend. There are probably people there tonight. So you can push back, but because you went there two weekends ago, for when is it even opening again? We've heard for years now that it's opening. I, I, I honestly think that you're not in touch with what this board has invested in in our town and what volunteers in this town on the Beaver Pond Committee and other recreational committees um, spend a lot of time to highlight this town. And I, I think that's a misstep with how you represent us. I mean, I, I've got to agree with Lisa in that it'd be nice to be featured one of these times. Um, you know, I know that the people at the rink would be more than happy to organize a skating party for one of your groups or that. I mean, there's nothing even to organize if you went to Beaver Pond and did some kayaking there. Um, we do have a lot more to offer than the Marble Museum. Definitely, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Definitely reach out to us. If you want to do things, I mean, we're open to it. And we want to spread out and not just stick to Rutland City. It's Rutland County that we represent. So reach out to us about things. Which was the intent of the scavenger hunt, which was to get everybody out into the communities, which worked. And as a result, they came back and they showed us pictures and they received gift baskets from Baird Family Farm. Yes. And uh, we shipped those to all locations around the U.S and driving to the Marble Museum. They came over the Marble Bridge and came through the downtown. So. Um, I'm just gonna, I know $1,700 isn't a lot of money. Um, I do agree with a lot of, of what everyone has said. I guess my issue, and I'm just gonna say this and I may be slammed for it, I, it's okay. <laughs> um, I just feel that like recently in the paper with everything going on with RRA and all the other agencies and, and I feel like the focus always is on Rutland and I understand this is a bigger scope, reaches further out, but I feel like they were slammed because they basically only met with people when they wanted money and I kind of feel this is the same situation. Um, I don't see you guys coming here to visit us on a periodic basis to say, hey, what's happening, or to go visit with our businesses. And maybe you do, and we're just not privy to it. Um, and as far as like bringing, you know, marketing and bringing people here, that's great. I'm not a big advocate of um, this, all these out-of-staters in our state, um, only because I feel like people who are Vermonters haven't had the opportunity to actually purchase homes and grow and stuff like that because of this. And I feel like the push has just always been out, like bring everybody in, but we don't have the sustainability or the ability to support them with businesses downtown, um, you know, places to work and things like that. So um, I feel like sometimes the marketing tool is mostly just let's bring people in, but then downtown is still not thriving. You know, there's not restaurants and businesses opening to kind of draw people like once you're here what do you do it's you know other than our whole recreation you know um aspect of vermont so that's where i kind of have issues with it and um i just feel like i said it's a small amount but still it these days in every town every dollar counts and if it's not benefiting us then it's you know seventeen hundred dollars not worth it so um that's just my two cents we have done a lot with Procter Gas. They're one of the prominent companies, businesses that reaches out to us and works with us. We reach out to them. I came over and did a story with them, um, but. Why, why didn't anyone reach out to us for the weekend and get away and ask us to do something here in Procter? I, I mean, actually did reach like out to that, every that, town. You reached out to I reached out to every town. Who, who do you reach out to in town? I usually reach out to the town managers and the town secretaries. Olivia specifically asked for where would you like us to put on the map, so. Yeah, and, and I was about to kind of speak up and take some heat for that. Um, I, I was under the impression that the Marble Museum would open up this summer. So I thought, well, at the Marble, I remember when I visited Proctor a year and a half ago before I was town manager, when you go on Google what to do in this area, it sends you to the 
Marble Museum, and I was one of those disappointed tourists to, to show up and find that it was closed um, for who knows how long. So my, my understanding was that it would be open and just, you know, in a quick thought, hey, this might be a good idea for you guys to represent on your scavenger hunt. But I also hear your point very loud and clearly so that there are more assets in town than just that that, that we can highlight. And I, and I can do a better job of that in the future. Happy yeah. to come back and talk about economic development anytime you'd like. Um, we have, we're in pretty close contact, I think, with, with Mike. Um, sent an email today about Green Mountain Power and Efficiency Vermont and what options might be available there. Um, so we will help in any way we can. And you did a lot of marketing for Zion Growers. Yes. So, yeah. Questions? Your support would be appreciated. We always appreciate coming to Proctor. No questions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you guys. No. <laughs> <laughs> I would blame you if you left. <laughs> We're just getting started. All right. Thanks for the time. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda is good stuff. How'd the book sale go? So great. Cool. The sign post looks great out there. Yeah. Yes, it's it does. really nice. <laughs> Are we doing one on the other end eventually? Uh, we're getting there. Yeah, I think they're going to build. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Looks so different. Looks. Oh, it looks really great. nice. Yeah. Looks more modern in some ways, which is looks kind of yeah. Cool. Well, yeah. they cleaned it. Yeah. Well, they they cleaned it really good too. They showed me a picture of all the. Yeah. Muck coming it off looks of solid it. and stuff. It looks, it looks more welcoming. It looks like, yeah. you know, not like, yeah. oh. <laughs> we well, went out to the scrapyard and got some pipes. And <laughs> <Yeah. put it laughs> Hanging on by a thread. Or something. Uh -huh. It looks nice. It really looks nice. They did a, they, it's amazing that they dug that. Yeah. It looks, it looks really good. Yeah. It does. Yeah, and that was one of the one of the goals of getting it up this year to kind of drive the incentive of maybe making us another one next year yeah. to get it up. Yeah. And we have tryouts at the high school for the play, and so that will be um, up and going. So it should be exciting because it's going to incorporate the high school and the elementary school. So oh, that'd be good. it's always fun to see little kids on stage. When is that? The play going to be? Uh, December, December something, isn't it? 16th, I think, something like that. I'll have that when I come back. Though, so. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, highway department. Foreman's report. Everybody got that in their packet? Mm-hmm. I like this. That is thorough. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I do like it. Kyle's been doing really a really excellent job. Yeah. Um, the only thing I have to add to his report is uh, that we, uh, I, I highlight this because it does take a good bit of work of tracking all these invoices and, and reviewing them. Uh, so we submitted reimbursement for the Florence Road repair. That was done successfully. And then uh, this week, I'll, now that I have timesheets, um, we're submit reimbursement for the MRGP project that happened next to the town garage which was completed about two weeks ago and I have been including our safety trainings in your packet but I didn't do it um, and this month we did a training on sprain and strain injury prevention Great. Great. thank you mm -hmm. all right Beaver Bond preliminary plan review yeah, so we have um, Jeff and Jenny. Uh, Jeff is our uh, design engineer with BHB, and Jenny is our project manager um, from Du Bois and King. Uh, so just so we all know, um, they offered to come down here to because the thought was it'd be easier to maybe do this in, in person and show you everything, but it's a long drive for just a short 15 minute meeting. So I thought this would be a, a little bit, bit more efficient and I believe they'll, they'll be able to share their screen with us if they need to. So they're here to answer any questions, give us a brief update and maybe try to manage my expectations of the, <laughs> of the project a little bit. But so it's, it's all I got. So basically everybody you talk to is, is um, 
definitely in agreement and okay with it. Other than Judy, you haven't heard from. Yeah, so I've got a follow up with Judy. Um, so I met with, uh, well, I sent Joel. So what, where we're at right now is we have preliminary plans and they're under review. It gave me the opportunity to send them, those off into an email. Now we're not in the right of way phase, so I'm getting ahead of myself by doing this. But um, I sent it to um, three different landowners, to Omia, uh, Frank, who I met up at the quarry, and uh, Judy Taranovich. There is one more landowner that, that we just barely go onto their property. Uh, so I'm gonna have to meet with them as well, but it's just it's just it's just a slope that has to go on to the property um, Frank and Omia, it doesn't seem to be uh, I don't think that that's gonna get I don't think that's gonna bog down the progress uh, Judy, I just haven't spoken to yet and um, This new landowner I, I have to approach as well uh, if if we have any issues with them, I think there is a possibility of maybe uh, moving the scope of the project over just a little bit to stay off of it, but I just, I don't see that as being necessary yet. Is it a new landowner or one that is just like a Butts Franks? Um, it's a little bit west of Franks. Okay. So, I believe it's Anderson. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's going to yes. be a small amount because I think, yeah. doesn't it cut right up and then just go back down? Like, like, mm -hmm. yeah. Just barely. Right. Uh, so, so that's where we're at with it. Uh, I don't want to get ahead of Jeff here, um, but we did meet with the state and, and they, th this is Peter, Peter, I don't, I don't have pronounced Peter's last name, Poshop? Poshop. Oh, okay. Poshop. So we met with Peter Poshop. Uh, they're always a bit hesitant to enter into the right-of-way phase before we're there, but they felt comfortable with uh, BHB going ahead and giving me plats of the right-of-ways so I can get that process going. Um, I got motivated a few months ago and decided I would like to push this to summer of 2023. It's scheduled for summer of 2024. Um, it's ambitious, to say the least, but it's something we're going to work towards. Um, we, uh, another thing that kind of worries me a little bit about 2024 is we have three capital improvement projects that we're thinking about accomplishing then. Beaver Pine Path, South Street Sidewalk, and now maybe the upgrades to the wastewater treatment plant. So it's, it's going to be a lot to manage for one, and for two, they're all reimbursement based. So those, as soon as we pay those things, they need to come back so we can continue um, funding our normal operations. So that was a long way of saying, I feel confident that I can get right of way agreements in pretty fast, okay. but there's still two landowners that I've not spoken to. Do you have any questions? Yeah, I was over at Frank's the other day and and uh, went over the he had the plans on the counter there and uh, oh did he yeah so. okay. yeah I dropped him off a, co a copy yeah and uh, got a nice looking gate up there now and yeah yep. um, it's the entry to our bikeway <laughs> <laughs> well it does and that was one thing I kind of caught. Frank in the act up there. He was erecting a fence along the property line, and that's something that when we first started the project design, the town was going to put a fence there. So I just need to coordinate with him that he doesn't build a fence there, and then we need to take it down for a yeah. temporary for temporary construction efforts or to change that right. slope a little bit. So I need to go up there and, and pay another visit to him. But he, he seemed on board with the project, so that's good. I'm confident that we can we can get through there. If we can move it up a year, that would be amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we're, I'm gonna do it, uh, at, uh, Jeff and I spoke, and we're gonna really kind of walk step by step from this point forward, you know. So, uh, we're gonna be meeting once a month, uh, just to check in. We're gonna have the state involved in that meeting. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna put our best foot forward to kind of get it done in a timely manner. 
And Jeff, I think I stole all of your talking points there, so I apologize. <laughs> I get going sometimes. That's why it's a good reason not to drive down here. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking that. that was kind of yeah. Deliver the same message. Yeah. Uh, no, that was that was well done. My blog you summarized it well. Um, I guess while I had that, um, while we are not like you know we're not too optimistic that we're going to get right away immediately. It's it's a historically difficult process to get through. Um, there's some back and forth with features that needs to be done. However, Michael's done a great job getting a head start on it, something that you don't see in a lot of these projects. Um, so we're hopeful that means we can get a shovel in the ground in 2023, but it won't. It likely won't be the you know completed construction by the end of 2023. I think we're we're feeling like you know it'd be optimistic to get it you know started in 2023, and that's feasible. But uh, just to be like. Uh, more realistic, it, it's not going to be open until 2024. I think that's that's the reasonable timeline with the expected number of VTrans reviews that need to happen between now and then. I'm happy to go through those in detail if you would like to just walk through the process, but I think Michael, you hit on the head that you know, we're going to be meeting regularly here as we enter this final phase of the project, so I think we're going to have some nice momentum to make all this happen as fast as we can. Cool. Hopefully you can have a ribbon cutting January 1, 2024. <laughs> <laughs> I'm optimistic about the construction time. I think the project can be built rather fast. It's really going to be a race for us to get to bidding debt by getting this project out to bid. And so we just got to get through these hoops and um, hopefully we can get something only started in 2023. Okay. Great. Right. Thank you. Um, Phil Anderson has his hand raised, but I'm not sure if it's for this conversation or if it was for Lyle. I apologize, I didn't see there was a message in the chat. Is he on? Is he yeah, they're muted? on. Yeah, they're muted. Oh, just wanted to ask what normal days activities were at their office. Thanks, it was for marketing group. Okay, it was for the marketing group. Okay. All right. Anybody have any questions on the? No. No. Um, Sounds good. Thank you both. <clears throat> All right, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Nothing further under highway. Is there a motion to go out of the board meeting into the Board of Water Commissioners? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Foreman's report. Nothing to add from. Credit supervisor report. So I've actually gone through and drafted you a memo. I was nervous I wouldn't be able to get the credit supervisor report in time, um, but I was. So just to kind of add to this, uh, I spoke to Emerald Acres. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start at the top and go down here on, on the list of delinquencies. I spoke to Emerald Acres Investment Friday. Um, I've got, a, I've got a phone number for them, and she said she's mailing off a check. She was going to mail off a check to pay in full Friday, and usually when they say they're going to do that, it happens. So oh. uh, we're kind of expecting that to come through. Uh, Lance Shue, I believe, is about to refinance. Usually when that happens, um, they expect all the utilities to be, be paid off, so that's something we'll be mindful of. Um, Mr. LaFrance has a letter to you that, that will, that's going to be um, touched on and later on in the meeting and then zion growers this was one of those scenarios where uh they're new to town so they didn't re receive a tax bill so i reached out to them and let them know that they're they're delinquent and they're going to get sounded like they're going to get straight so is this this is what this is water and sewer correct and then so the way that i kind of so I'm just wondering, okay, so they didn't, they didn't get those bills either? They didn't get, yeah, because they didn't get their water and sewer bills. Because they just took ownership. Because the preservation trust would have. Yes. Yeah. And then the bottom here are kind of newer delinquencies. Uh, well, ones that have a crap back over 750. Even when I'm down there, uh, these people have kind of been shuffling in, so. Can I just go back to Zion? I'm sorry. Sure. So, um, so is that just since they've 
taken over that that's what the costs are for the water and sewer? Yeah, they have a, a, a pretty large water and sewer bill. Okay. They pay more than one. Um, yeah, they pay multiple. The school does. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And no one has any more questions, so that's kind of the wrap up of my uh, credit supervisor report. Aside from that, we did have a uh, collection committee meeting, and I, I think it went really well. You have a few representatives here that can speak on more if they'd like, but we plan on meeting again uh, next week, two weeks. I like the color coding. Yeah. It's be Halloweenish. Yeah. Very West Rutland. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's what we'll let it go holiday. this time. I'll make it holiday theme. That's good. There you go. Okay, but, um, yeah, and I think we're going to have a, a, we're already doing really well. This is one of those months, two months, where people really, under new agreements, don't pay on their delinquencies anyway. They're just in charge of paying current. So, um, I, I feel strongly that this number will continue to go down and then when we're able to make shutoffs again in the spring as I now that I've got my feet under me I think we're, it's going to be efficient okay. uh, the Bridgewater project update uh, so, so this is the 325 feet of main line that was installed and four homes that were rerouted to the new line. Uh, I believe Pat finished them all up. I checked on them on Monday before I went home on some, on some leave and uh, he just had one more home to do. So I believe all four houses are now connected to the new main line running along Warren Bridge Road. Great. Great. Field Street Wellhouse Pump Repair Update. So this is really good news. The, the motor came in a lot sooner than we thought it would, and uh, Parker Wells will be here this week to install the motor. A representative from a &E will be there to just kind of observe it all. And he, he's also bringing the water side of the pump. Remember, I kind of gave you a really high estimate, and then I went back down. He's bringing the water side of the pump, but we will not install that unless A and E says it is absolutely necessary. Um, so, Lisa, want a cop drop? Sure. No, I don't want it. <laughs> All right. Okay, just want to make sure you're okay. Okay. Any questions? All right. Is there a motion to go out of board of water commissioners and into the board of sewage commissioners? So I'll move. Second. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, nothing to add in the foreman's report. The Willow Street sewer project update. You know, I haven't been down there, so I've been relying on Bruce, um, who's given me updates, and he told me that the paving looks like it was done. <coughs> yeah. um, I spoke to Rick DuPont on Thursday, right before, or one day before they started doing paving, and a and &E also agreed that it was one of the smoothest running projects that they've ever had the pleasure of designing and managing. So I'm, I'm really happy that that's kind of behind us and uh, I'll be excited to get new flow rates coming into that uh, Willow Street yeah, pump station and see what kind of good reduction. Brainstorm, that'll be a I good I. test. And the only thing that I, they hadn't cleaned up the triangle down there, but that's, mm -hmm. that was just a matter of moving some stuff and redoing some grass and seed. But all the grass, it appears though it looks real good to, down there that they reseeded and mm -hmm. planted the specific plants that they mm -hmm. they needed to put in. Oh yeah, the wetland. Looks good. Yeah, it's nice to have the blacktop too. Um, oh, I bet. Yeah. North Street. <laughs> so you <heard> it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they even did a good job there too at the tail end on people's property, like uh -huh. paying it, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. well, just having Rick DuPont out there, a uh, little, right. plug, little plug for Rick. I mean, it yeah. was, right, he yeah. was incredibly helpful. Uh, every project, I, I, was a, I was a project manager for quite a few years. Um, 
and I never had support like that on the ground. So it really made the whole process a lot easier. Yeah, it made it really run smoothly. <coughs> okay. WWTP ESA update. Yeah, so a lot of letters there, but that's the wastewater treatment plan, engineering, services agreement. Uh, we're just still waiting on the state to get back with our application, and we're just poking and prodding. And I've been saying for a couple of select board meetings now that we'll get it back, and uh, I think Wayne Elliott and I are hoping again it'll be at our next meeting. So Yeah, I had a chance to chat with with both Wayne and okay. Jason at the uh, town fair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and if they're down uh, this week too for the pump, I think we'll probably take them down to the treatment plant just to walk around a little bit more. Yeah, Wayne's pretty f familiar with that. He was, mm -hmm. you know, really involved when we put the the new building up. Yeah. Uh, and Anything else? Nothing under sewage commissioners? Is there a motion to go out of the sewage commissioners and into the regular select board meeting? So. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, manager's report. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I've been speaking a whole lot, so I'm just gonna kind of run through it uh, to not waste anybody's time. You have my report there in front of you. Um, so I submitted reimbursement for Florence Road repairs. Again, I, I had that earlier in the meeting, but um, it, it does take a, a good bit of time as these projects are going on. Uh, we, ish, we sent an issuing letter of fines for Kane Street. Um, I've had trouble uh, getting in contact with the officer that went up there. Maybe he's having trouble contacting the homeowner. But we're just not sure, so I'll reach out to him tomorrow and follow up on it. But it's something we're tracking. Uh, and it doesn't look like any effort has been, been made to clean up the property. I, even after the letters. Um, I, I, again, attended various local and regional committee meetings. Or, you know, these include Parks and Rec, FIRA, and SPR, which was just a FEMA roundtable event. Uh, Vermont Leagues of Cities, uh, Vermont City Managers Association, the Planning Commission, and Collections Policy Committee. Um, like Lyle said, we were both in attendance of the Marble Museum um, well, we'll call it open house. I think that's what they called it. There were over 150 people in attendance along with Zion and uh, Zion celebrated their first shipment of hemp there. They, they actually said something like it was the first legal shipment of hemp mm -hmm. in Vermont or something. So really? yeah, something along yeah. those lines. So kind of exciting. Uh, and it doesn't, and doesn't stink. It doesn't at all? Well, I don't smell it. I didn't smell it when I was over there, so. It, I think I saw a picture of it. It just kind of like looks a bale? like hay. Yeah, it just yeah, it's a big like bale. Yeah. 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 So, um, uh, we executed a facility use agreement for the Girl Scout meeting at the rink. I've got that included in your packets mm -hmm. along with their proof of insurance. Uh, I like to see the, uh, our assets being used for stuff like this. Um, I attended the Vermont Better Places webinar. Uh, I'm, I, won't be able to share this on the screen, but it's kind of a neat program if you look into it. I've never, I've always thought about this, but never really figured it would happen. You know, a lot of times towns have trouble making matches to projects they want to do, like even smaller projects. Well, the Better Places program actually allows crowd sourcing to match projects. So if you have something small around town, I, I, someone did a pickleball court through it, and I think there was a lot of planning around that. But if if the town is interested in doing some kind of um, beautification projects uh, or better places projects, then you can create this kind of like crowdfunding page to meet your match. So if you're interested, anybody interested, I can send you the web page. They've got some of the projects on here that they've done, like here, the Mary bar very very holidays light up the city you know they they're aiming for five thousand they've gotten four thousand dollars in 21 days left so kind of a neat idea so if anybody wants to check that out better places empowering vermonters to create vibrant public spaces we could do that with beaver pond yeah i bet you can do it with yeah all kinds of stuff um 
So it's something to kind of think about if you've got any projects around town that would work. Uh, so Beamers couldn't be here at this meeting. They'll be at our next one. Um, sure. I'm, I'll, I'll get to that later. So website content updates, a, a few updates have been made, but most important is that the winter on-street parking rules take effect November 1st. And that's, uh, you can view more detail on that on the homepage. Okay, audit report update. I'm not gonna give a full um, audit report of the report, but w what is kind of <coughs> nice to see is that if you, if you have, um, the, so in front of you, you have two balance sheets. One is for our general fund and one is for our proprietary funds. So our enterprise funds like water and sewer. Uh, the bottom three lines are, are kind of the important part of the general fund balance sheet. So we had revenue, the town had revenue of about $47,285 at the end of the year. So we started off the year with, with I'm going to use flat numbers. We started off the year with 136,000 in the bank. We ended the year with 184,000 in the bank. I'll have hard copies of this, and 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 it was kind of the same trend with our proprietary funds as well. So our financial position is stable. Um. So, okay, big news. Next meeting, we have our FY24 budget presentation, or I do anyway. Uh, I'm hoping to have this in your mailbox. It's not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday, because I think we have a couple weeks until our next, like, I think it's like one of the longer. Yeah, yeah there's an extra yeah. week. So it actually gives me a little bit more time. Um, and uh, I, not all of my numbers are exact yet. I'm still waiting for a few contracts to come in, like Lisa Wright's, and I think the Mosquito District, we've got a good handle on now. But, but I feel confident my numbers are close, and I've still got to meet with Chief Webb um, just to kind of go over s some details of his, uh, his uh, expectations. Um, and he might be at our next meeting as well, because I think they're getting closer to wanting to buy this fire truck, but I'll let him speak towards that. He knows much more about it than I do. Um, and then project management activities, we, we've gone through the gambit here of everything we got going on, and, and some of it's wrapping up, some of, some of it's just starting. So I won't uh, go through that big long list. But uh, the draft personnel policy is open for discussion and feedback. That's just a reminder to everyone. I have nothing else to add to it. We're just standing by for feedback regarding um, uh, some discussion with Beamers. And that concludes my manager's report. And feel free to ask me any questions. Do you have any questions? No. All right. Discussion action items. Everybody looked at the bills? Yep. Yes. Okay. All right, perfect. Thank you. Sheriff's report. Any questions or comments? Oh, whoops. Yeah, the, the new format I think is a little easier to read. Yeah. <clears throat> Tax sale bidding authorization for 81 East Street. Yeah, we have tax sale tomorrow at 10 o'clock. This just authorizes me um, as the bidder for the town to set the base bid. That will cover uh, delinquent costs, uh, tax, taxes, utilities, and then uh, attorney fees. We could end up with it, or somebody could actually be there and bid over. Yeah, and, and uh, from what I've heard is that quite a few people have shown interest in the oh. in the property. Oh, so we do expect some. That's good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Some bids. That's great. Uh, yeah, perfect world. We don't, you know, we don't have to deal with it. Right. And yeah. If we do take ownership of it, we hold on to it for a year, because uh, that's how long the the owner has the the previous owner has the opportunity to buy it back. Right. So we hang on to it for a year and then uh, mm -hmm. sell it. Yeah. Well, good luck. Yeah, thanks. 
<laughs> All right. You Thank want you. this signed? Uh, you, I, you know, you can make a motion or just sign that. I think either way would right. work. But. Okay. Is there a motion to authorize town manager to bid on the tax sale of 81 East Street? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? All right. Aye. All right, payment agreement for delinquent water sewer at 17 Center Street. Everyone got that letter? Yes. Any discussion or questions or thoughts? So he's basically promising to pay yeah. the balance once the first of the year comes. Is that right, Michael? Put some down on the balance. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so he's asking this Thanks. time 200 a month for the first year, and after the first year. To the first of the year. Yeah, to the first of the year. Uh, put money down. He, so this is kind of, uh, kind of an interesting story. Mr. LaFrance and I, he's been calling me about once a week and he was one of those that we were going to shut off. Um, we were, we were in his yard shutting him off and he reached out to be happy. And I think this is, I think we're kind of just locked up in, um, some red tape with him. Uh, VHAP, he's applied to VHAP once before but did it himself, which, uh, you know, isn't suggested, but he did it himself and applied only for electric. So now he's having trouble reapplying. And again, it's just red tape, I think. So, uh, it, yeah, he's been working with me every week. I, I just go by the contract, um, which is eight payments, which puts him well over 400 a month. Uh, which he's expressed to me that it's just kind of out of the realm of possibility for him. So this is his next step in, in, the, in the process. Any thoughts, comments, considerations? Does he have an agreement currently? He does not. Okay. So we can't do anything until April anyway. Right. So if he does follow through and he does the 200 a month and then he takes money from his 401k and pays it the first of the year. Right. Then it's paid up. Yeah. I don't think we need any action for that though. I think we just, because. Accept that agreement. I mean, we don't have an agreement. It's not so. an agreement. It's just, we're going to let him do that. And then if April comes along. Right. But I would put it in writing as an agreement. Okay. So you just go with the 200 a month for now yeah. until. January 1. Okay. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. Do you want to extend it beyond January 1? Because, I mean, it's not as though, I don't know, I don't think he can just transfer the money that quickly January 1st. Yeah. Goes over the right, year, yeah. But he needs may, time to maybe have a that, week or two. that happen. Yeah. I'm thinking. So, it's, I mean, you're only talking three months. Yeah. Right. If you go through the end of January. If he did 200 yeah. a month, say, through the end of January, right? And Maybe pace. February 1st might be a better time. And I yeah. would, yeah. yeah. Does that work? So 200 for until he can get that money, hopefully by February 1, by the time all the paperwork's done. And then... Uh, I guess. Then I guess we have to decide, are you, do, are you looking for him to pay off the balance of delinquent at that time? Or have an extended agreement that he's paying more than the 200 a month? I would, I would think that he should need to pay enough to get him to the point where 200 a month from that point would get him current. Does that make sense? Oh, his balance, whatever he pays down. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And then, and then continue with the $200 month. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. So right. I would expect to see a down payment on February 1st that would make that $200 a month. Correct. Yeah. And then, but I guess we also want to make it clear with him um, because I do admit I haven't been t 
totally clear up to this point on the, on this argument, but do see it pretty clearly now that he needs to be making current payments as well. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So whatever whatever from that balance will get him to the point where two hundred will get him mm-hmm. current completely by June thirtieth. Mm-hmm. Which which is clear, and I do understand it's clear in our new contract. I was just having a hard time wrapping my mind around that was not a contingency on the older contracts. Right. And you said the whole balance of delinquency paid by June 30th? No, whatever it would be so that the $200 a month payment, sorry, by June 30th? Yeah. Yes, okay. everything done by the okay. end of the fiscal year. All right, okay. okay. Question to the board. I would think you to be a bank, because this is what it sounds like. I mean, if he's going to pay two hundred dollars a month, how much interest are you going to get after the bill payment? One and a half percent. 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 Do you know when you go to a bank and borrow money, you don't pay one and a half percent? That's what was passed by the town and town meeting. Yeah. yeah. I'm just saying. It, it, it seems like that everybody's on a payment plan. Here. It's not fair to some of us that do pay our bills on time. I'm on the bank board, all right, and I'm concerned about this, that it's beginning to be like a payment plan. Michael, how much have we reduced the delinquencies in the last six months? So in 2019, the delinquencies were over 200,000, and on July 1st, it was at 140,000. And it is now currently at ninety nine thousand. If you don't add in the the new the, the new mm-hmm. delinquency amounts from the old water, so pretty significant. Because mm-hmm. I'm just saying, most people would go to the bank and borrow their money to pay the thing off, and they would pay the bank. Mm-hmm. And it seems like at, at this percentage, I shouldn't pay mine because this is a good percentage. Only one. What you said, one point four. I think it's 1.5 for the first, and then there's another, something else kicks in once it's... It's 1% in the beginning, and then it's 1.5. Yeah. Because you can't get that bank. <clears throat> Again, John, this is what the town voted on. I, I, I know, but I'm just saying, times have changed. This was like four years ago. And I think it's the most we're allowed to charge by statute, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well. And I think, and the collection committees is now working on new procedures. And I think, you know, if if not penalizing, if anything, it's equating for future value of money. You know, so a dollar a day is not worth a lot it is tomorrow. It's just kind of the basis of interest. And do you get stuck every once in a while? Oh, with paying bills? Yeah, they don't pay it. Oh yeah, but I think and we. You I think we go back and negotiate again. No, we don't no, We created it so we don't negotiate again. If they break the agreement, they break the agreement, and we shut the water off. And to get it turned back on would have to be a significant down. You watch your step on that one. You can't get sued on that. Okay. Is there anything else? Um, just a an update on. Uh, you probably saw the article in the paper let's see last Saturday about the Mosquito District uh, there at the meeting we went down through the uh, line by line budget and uh, you know our assessment as a we contract with them uh, it's probably going to go up uh, a couple of thousand dollars and uh, I'm going to a, a meeting they wanted everybody to attend and uh, I'm going to that Wednesday night. They, uh, they came up with a, you know, a budget and it really was going to uh, affect Pittsford and Brandon really pretty, pretty significant. So they uh, rescinded the motion that had been made last month and we're going to uh, look over the formula that they came up with uh, maybe 
spread it out a little more because it was going to be pretty substantial for uh, Pittsford and, and Brandon. So, and, uh, so I'm going up to that. There's two meetings, and then we're going to try to revise this uh, formula so it's, uh, it works out. So it doesn't put everybody in. When's the next meeting, Bruce? Pardon me? When's the next meeting that you meet? Uh, when, Wednesday night. We haven't set the following meeting, but then it will, whatever we come up with in these next uh, two meetings, uh, then it'll be brought before the whole board. And, uh, what have you, so. But uh, there probably is going to be some changes. There, there may be some differences when people want to have their backyard sprayed for a, a gathering. Mm -hmm. There might be a charge for that. It's in the talking stage. And, uh, mm -hmm. It may be that people that want don't want to be sprayed. Uh, there's quite a lot of labor involved in that for them to come out and put stakes in and then uh, when the season is over, taking them out. So, you know, they're trying to be as upfront on the cost as possible. So just to update, let you know that we're they're trying to be really out in the open and chemicals have gone up and uh, what have you, so. Yeah. Can I say two things and I gotta go with more Sure. I don't want to listen to Tommy on this. Number one, this town got full of potholes. And this is the year that they should have been taken care of. This is a perfect year to take care of all these potholes in this town. And there's a lot of them, all right? Second of all, I'm very concerned about the drinking water. I have talked to the state about it. They have talked to me about it. I'm concerned. And the last thing, the town people should be notified that the pump did fail and was not working at that time. And also, the gate should be locked down there at the Field Street Well. The way people are today, that gate should be shut in the lock. I'm telling you, you can't trust anybody today. And I'm just concerned about this. Because once this happened, something happens to the water, it's over with. It's good for him to say, well, don't worry about it. Well, if I drink the water, I'm dead. It's over with. And they didn't like that. You can see it all over the country now. Look what Bennington's going through, and they're still going through it. People are up and arms, and people are very tight, and they're very concerned about the field speed well. That gate has been open from day one, and why? Why do we spend all this money for a gate that we don't even shut and lock? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anything else anybody has under new business? All right, is there a motion to go into executive session to enter ex to discuss the town's civil litigation over the assessed value of the Green Mountain Hydro Power Facility? So moved. Is there a second. second? All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. All right, to executive session.